Do we wait? We might have to wait. There we about go. That, about that for a tease, because joining us right now for the very first time on Texas Sports Unfiltered is one of the newest members of the Longhorn Hall of Honor. That's right, a guy who was just announced as a part of the 69th Texas Athletics Men's Hall of Honor class of 2023, the legendary lifetime Longhorn, Quan Cosby, is with us this morning. What's up, Quan? What's up, fellas? Sorry about the delay. I get back from Arizona, and I've learned that my wife has changed Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'm like, why is it my computer working? But, hey, man, good to talk to you, gentlemen. It's good to have you, man. It's good It's good to see you. Where, are you in the veranda there getting ready, overlooking what golf course is that? Because there's something <laughs> in the background. <laughs> no, I'm just on the patio, man. There's a lot going on in that house since I got back. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go outside. It's uh, – a cold front. It's only in the 80s here today, so yeah. uh, it's not too bad this morning. <laughs> God, the missus changes the Wi-Fi when you're out of town. I mean, that is brutal. You can't do that without telling you. That is awful. Dude, I, I'm just happy my, my keys still work, I guess. So <laughs> why, why I can do it. As much as you travel, yeah. As much as you travel, it's exactly. good to get the key in there. Hey, congratulations <laughs> on your uh, induction into the Hall of Honor. I know that's coming up soon, and I know that means an awful lot to you, Quan, and, and what an honor. I mean, the University of Texas, I mean, did you ever think that you would be a part of the Hall of Honor at the University of Texas, my friend? No, man, I appreciate that, Buck. And I know you you said it as well, Brad. I didn't, dude. I, I, I You know, you go about it. You, you try to do the best. Um, and what's funny is I have a weird kind of perspective. When I was in the league, when I played with Chad Ochocinco and T.O., I said, listen, man, I want to play in the Super Bowl catch two touchdowns, but I don't necessarily want to be the MVP. And they were like, what? You're crazy. I said, dude, I don't want the fame or craziness that come with it. So weirdly, you just – I always want to produce. You know, I certainly want to produce. And clearly that's a very different conversation in the NFL versus UT because, as I say, I didn't – I never had a favorite NFL team, but uh, I bleed burnt orange. So to get that honor, to get that call from the athletic staff, um, it's pretty next level. And – i tell you what's cool, too, you know, DJ, um, so many folks, you know, they, they shot me a, a text and said, welcome to the club. And that brotherhood, we always have it, but to um, gain it on that level, uh, TJ Ford even, uh, other sports folks that, that that hit me up. It was, that's when I think it really sunk in. I was like, man, this is cool. I don't know. I don't even know how to, how to respond at that point. So, and then to go in with my brother, Jonathan Scott, is, is pretty special. Yeah, two members of that 2005 National Championship team, a part of this illustrious Hall of Honor class for the University of Texas. How did you find out, Quan? I mean, what was what was the call like? Who told you? Like, how did this whole thing go down when you actually found out you were going to be oh, a part of this thing? That's actually a funny story. And, and Bucky, when I talked to Bucky and E when they were on the radio show, I'd always laugh because me and CDC, we argue like we're freaking, we've been married for 60 years. And so he, he calls me, Bucky, I was on the golf course that particular day. Of course. Um, <laughs> he calls me and and, he, and I didn't answer because, you know, etiquette. I'm trying to play golf. Trying to play golf, dude. And, and and I was in a sweet course, too. And he called me again. And I was like, what the, what the hell is going on here? I was like, and then he calls me again. I was like, all right, I think something's wrong. Yeah. And so, I, unfortunately, that's where it goes. And so then I, I call him back. And he's like, of course, goes right into arguing with me. You don't answer my call, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, dude, what do you want? I'm sitting here, I'm busy. And I'm, I'm trying to make a putt, man. Hey, 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 he said the same thing, too. He's like, what freaking golf course are you on? You're not busy. <laughs> and I said, dude, what do you want? And he said, well, I have Ricky Brown and um, uh, Chris Belonsky right here. And we wanted to tell you uh, um, you are now a member of the Hall of Honor. And I was like. Oh crap! That's what I didn't call. I didn't answer the phone for that, and and I laughed, and I can hear them saying congratulations. And I was like, of course, in in typical him and I conversation fashion, I said, dude, if you'd have had one of them call, I would have answered. So you, you did that wrong. And That's so, right. Just have them call you. It, it never goes as smooth as it. It's always a freaking it, it, my neighbor's dogs out here mad at somebody, but um, <laughs> it never goes as uh, as planned. But it was it, it actually adds. And, and the genuine nature of, uh, one, him and I relationship, but just one of the coolest calls I ever had. I'm, 
I tell you what, I, I, saying I didn't really, it didn't really sink in. Dude, I think I doubled the next three holes because I was just like, holy cow, this is kind of <laughs> cool. And um, I, I end up, I, I would, probably wasn't supposed to, but these guys know I wouldn't answer the phone. So I was like, dude, I just got the craziest call ever. So it ended up being quite the celebration with that group of friends. You know, Quan, you know, you've had a, You've had a blessed career being able to play professional baseball and professional football. And this day is a day in the lives of a lot of young professional football players that will end. Some of them will never play the game of football again. And it is a it is a hard day because I, I, I know it well because, you know, with the New York football giants, I got cut on the last day. The cut day, the cut time was four o'clock. I got cut at three forty five. The dude came to my room and it was <laughs> You know, I, I because your your highs are so high, yeah. and that low was well. I you know will I try it again? Which I never did. What am I going to do? What is my career going to be like from this point on? But it is a day that a lot of young men who've been playing this game for a, for a long, long time that even had the chance to go to a football professional camp and be a part of preseason games. It's over. It becomes over with, and then your life has to move on. You either try it again. Or your life moves on. You know, you either start a family or you go work at, like I did, Bethlehem Steel. I mean, you go work in the yeah. steel mills and figure out in about nine months, this ain't what you want to do for the rest of your life. So it, it's a tough day for those out there. And, I mean, you remember those days of, of being there and how important it was for you to continue on and, and try to continue on. But you, I, I have that special feeling for guys that this is over with for them because some of them won't try again. Someone won't get an opportunity to try again. Someone will move on in their lives. And it is a tough day around the league for guys. You know, it is, man. You know, it's, it's two levels to it, Bucky. I, I had a weird story. When I got cut the first time, um, I was the freaking team captain of the Bengals or special teams. It was the weirdest freaking thing. And um, I don't know that me and Marvin ever really clicked. He, he was a different, he was a different breed. And, um, and their special teams, by the way, because I still keep in touch with their coach. He didn't even know about it. He was fired up and like going, what the – you just cut my captain? And uh, and they struggled for a little bit in special teams after. The Bengals are rolling now, but when we were there, we weren't great, but our special teams was the best part of it, and defense got a little better. So, no, nah, man, it, it, that day is so wild. And, you know what, I will say I was a little bit weird from a standpoint of – I knew God blessed me with a certain you know, amount of ability, but – I played football because it was almost like honoring God and giving me that ability versus, and I, but I knew that I didn't want to play it forever. I was a little small guy, smaller guy mm -hmm. for football, especially for the league. And I loved it. And it was competitive and, and all of that. But I wanted that platform to didn't just kind of catapult me to the sure. to other things similar to what I'm doing at, you know, UT now or advocating for different players and all the above. And the irony of that is I had a long talk with Colt yesterday. You know, we, we, you know, the Cardinals let him go. And honestly, I'll be honest. I, I saw him a text. I said, congratulations. Because <laughs> one, <laughs> that organization sucks. Yeah. You know, but two, man, the, the guy is 12 years in the league, um, four kiddos. And I, what I did not know that he told me yesterday, he sold his freaking house in Austin. So he's trying to figure that out. I was like, hey, man, we're pretty good spot up here in the Burbs and see the park if you want to come. Um, but um just figuring that life out. His kids are in school. You know, they can't just be uprooted. It, when you get to a certain point in your career, it, beca it becomes crazy, man. It becomes when you have families and all the above. Um, and kudos, I mean, similar, I think a little bit to me, almost looking forward to doing other things and trying to make a difference in life. That'll be cold. Cold to come back around here. Now, if they get a multi-year deal, I told me better take it and tell Rachel and them to relax. But um, <laughs> if he doesn't, Come back to Austin, and there's going to be a freaking oh, absolute amount of things that he can do positively around this area for UT, even if that's what he chooses. Can maybe even consider doing some TV stuff, but that's getting a little wacky. So, man, it is a tough day, whether whether you have a plan or not, because it's what you've lived with and done for so freaking long. But and well, and you put so much into it. Um, but I was fortunate enough to have some great mentors and present powers back in the day, Coach Brown, of course. And we talked a lot about that day. Uh, it doesn't happen like that a lot. Um, but you know what? Me playing baseball is why I had a different mindset. I right. played a professional sport and then came back to school, got my degree. So I was kind of always networking and thinking about, yep, you know what? This is going to end one day. Mm -hmm. um, 
and, and, and try to take advantage of that perspective. And going to the great UT, uh, there's so many freaking alum and, and uh, even lettermen and donors who, who, if you do it right, they're willing to give you opportunities to uh, make a good living. Yeah, that's so funny what you texted Colt because I agree 100%, right? Congratulations on getting out of the Arizona Dude. Cardinals organization because they're, I mean, they're trying to tank, right? Like, yeah. e- e- even if Colt McCoy was there, they still have one of the worst rosters in the NFL and they had a shot to be one of, if not the worst teams in football. But now that they're turning to the guys that they're turning to instead of Colt, it's literally like, uh, hey, can we please get Caleb Williams here next year kind Dude, of deal? You, you know what's weird is um, usually people try to hide when they try to tank. Yeah, they're so. I mean, it's it's. I did not think an organization get worse than my experience at Jacksonville, but Jacksonville's ball and they made the playoff. That you know they're putting. And by the way, when I got to Jacksonville, that owner was only in the year two and he was trying to figure a lot out. Sure. But now you, you can see he's a, he wants to win, which is pretty cool. Arizona, it is um, it, it's almost cringeworthy how bad they've kind of. Done. I mean, they had JJ. I mean, they actually had a pretty good roster a few years ago. And Cliff, uh, I, I really like Cliff as a person, but uh, Cliff Cliff made some tough choices, even yeah. bringing in Kyler Murray. And that that dude just, uh, I don't know that he made the. It, it was just, it was a complete leadership just failure, failure. from the top <laughs> to the bottom. Yeah. It really was every layer. And and you know, it's funny because we're in Texas. We don't hear about the drama of Mexico and all that stuff that kind of happened from the GM level and all the above. There's lawsuits within that organization. So they don't pick it up. They're going to be the next, you know, commander sale. They're going to get forced to sell. They're, they're, they're running it so bad. It's looking a little bit bad on the league. So, yeah, man, Colt, Colt I won't say what he said in response because he's a class act. And he and what he said was classy, but he's. Yeah. I don't think he's that – Um. Sad. I don't. I don't. I don't think he lost a lot of sleep with, with that decision. But he also is a, a a guy who spent twelve years in the league has made a really good living. Yeah. And you know, you if 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 you're sharp and you continue to do your work, I mean, even if your skills start to diminish at, at that position as a quarterback, they need a good solid person to be the guy who come in and really stabilize what's going on. I mean, it doesn't mean you're going to win fourteen games as a starting quarterback as a backup. But you can stabilize things today until they can get it straight. But at that organization, as you said, it's not going to get straight for a while with the <laughs> bidwells and the people who who run the organization. You got it's just been junk. It's been garbage for a long time. It didn't just happen right. in Arizona. That's been that's been like that for a long, long time. And as you said, I mean, when you were with Cincinnati, the Browns, that thing was a mess for a long, long time too. Yeah. You know, you just you have to have the proper ownership. You go take your lumps, take your hits. You know, tank under the skies of trying to get better, but, but, but get better. You know what I'm saying? Don't just tank and continue to tank every year. Tank so that you can get better. Don't tank yeah. so people can talk about you tanking every year. You know, <laughs> They tank and then have a horrible draft. Yeah. Like, what are y'all doing <laughs> over there? I'm like, what did you tank for then? But the truth of the matter is this, and a lot of people don't talk about the business of the NFL. They're still making eight, oh. you know what, amount of money. And, and, and sadly, when I think about the league, which is why it, you know, you can say, oh, well, you didn't get to play a receiver as much or you didn't do. No, that, that has nothing to do with it. You're still playing the game. You're still on the sideline. It has to do with the organizations. Um, the, when, when you're with a good organization and they treat you like you're in the league and like you, you know, like they care about at least football a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's cool. The Broncos was that for me. The Broncos organization, uh, the way Elway, who was the president at the time, ran it. I remember when I did my tryout for the Broncos, Elway was sitting here working out running lines. And then he's sitting there sweating all the way freaking to his belly. And then he watched the workout and was like, come on, Cosby, I remember you at Texas. That's, we want to sign you and blah, 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 blah. And then it started. And that, that was a pretty cool deal. And just, you know, to having chefs, this is what's so crazy. The little things. We had a chef for breakfast, lunch, and if we had a late night dinner and just the way they – I mean, the places they put us up in, it was just a whole different experience versus, you know, the other two teams that I played for. Now, I will say Cincinnati, again, when we did have the CBA and they were forced to spend money, they've cleaned theirs up a lot. You know, I, I talked to players that are on that team now, and it's it's pretty cool, and I'm, I'm happy for them. And we've seen, again, what Jacksonville have done 
where they're winning and taking care of their teams better. But um, the organization matters. And, and, and some of them are actually doing a better job. And now you're seeing it's, it's crazy how do a better job, you get more competitive. Um, the other ones like that one is, is not. And it's, 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 it's a little rough from their standpoint. Yeah, ownership matters. The organization matters 100%. Legendary lifetime Longhorn Quan Cosby joining us here on Texas Sports Unfiltered. All right, Quan, got to ask you about this current Texas football team, man. Before we get the you know kind of all encompassing thoughts and maybe your expectations for this crew in 2023, as I lose my voice and get it back <laughs> randomly, uh, man, I want you to talk about this receiver room. Like you played with some talented receivers. You mentioned some of the guys you played with in the league, but also at Texas with Shipley, with Lima Swede, with Billy Pittman. Uh, yes. Nate Jones, just to name a few. I mean, there were some talented cats in that wide receiver room alongside you, and obviously you're very much at the top of that list. But this wide receiver room, man, it feels like you might have to go all the way back to when you were playing to where you had this much talent in that wide receiver group. Just talk about those guys and maybe your expectations for these receivers this year. Dude, I, I, I laugh because I joke a lot with B.J., Roy and Sloan, and that was a great group as well. And and they and, and we argue as athletes do about the receiver rooms, and we throw the numbers out, and then they get pissed off and say we didn't have that offense, <laughs> and we go at it. I was like, I caught ninety some balls, and so did Shippy the same year. They're like, that's just that's just crazy. Uh, and even you know the the, the Wayne McGarrys and Kwame Cavill rooms, we've had some rooms in there, man. And so I say all that to say this. From a production standpoint, we're, time will tell. From an on-paper standpoint, maybe the best room we've ever had. And, wow. and, and I, don't, I don't say that lightly because I respect our rooms. Uh, I respect the Roy's and the Kwame's and the, all the folks who have caught you know, 90 plus 100 balls and, and are, you know, put some skins on the wall. But when, when I'm saying truly talent for talent, and, and, and also, I'm not saying one, two, three, one through three, because again, we'll give a, we have some good rooms in there, one through three, but one through six, these cats, there's no drop offs to their freshmen and cook. And then, you know, you have a guy who transfers from Georgia and has a couple of national championships and a touchdown in it, uh, and Mitchell, and uh, one of my favorites of all time. And he's a small town dude, so I, there's a little bit of bias for that. And Jay Witt, and Jay Witt haven't even reached his potential. I think he's going to have. You know, he's had, he had a good year last year, but I think he's going to have a true breakout year this season with, with, with a more experienced Quinn and line and all the things that come with it. And and quite frankly, as much as we love Bijan, him being gone puts a little more pressure on the receivers. And then um, Worthy, you know, a, a, a veteran, as crazy as it sounds, a veteran Worthy who's going to destroy all of our records in, in the receiving room. And so, um, especially touchdowns. So, man – it is, again, one through six. There's not a better receiver room, in my opinion, in Texas history. And certainly, um, quite, quite frankly, between them and Ohio State, I think that they're one of the top two receiving rooms in the country. So I have very high expectations for them, which leads me to the team. You know, I, I really like Sark. I think he's genuine. I think he gets it. I think he's that fit that we often talk about when it comes to being a coach at University of Texas. Um but I think this is a very big season that, uh, you know, the farewell season for the Big 12, uh, which you ain't going to get any favors. There are going to be some folks coming at you like they always do. But the hell with that. They came at us, too, you know, and, and, and we embraced that and, and, and took it as a challenge and no better time to get their best and whoop them in, at, you know, anyway. So I think getting to the Big 12 championship, and, and, and I think I can say that and, and confidently believe he feels the same way. Um, if they don't get there, it, I don't. I, you know, football is is tough, as a, a few coaches ago used to say. But um, I, if if you're gonna put yourself on that elite level, if you're gonna go to that other league next year, you have to take care of business. You know, football is tough for Bama, football is tough for Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan. These teams that hell, football is tough for TCU last year, and you know, Sonny got to the freaking Natty in year one, which is. You just got to respect that, dude. So I think the combination of what's, what TCU did last year versus where we're going and all the above, and last but not least, the roster that we have, I think we uh, it's, it's, it's Big 12 or, 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 or 
I'm not going to say fell season, but uh, it's certainly going to be a little disappointed if we don't reach that goal. Yeah, you know, I, I don't believe Sark has to reach his peak, but his trajectory needs to be moving upward before they head to the SEC. And and in that way, Quan, I, I believe this head coach is going to have to win a couple games by his play calling on what he does. And whether it's offense or defense, it's going to be on his decisions. I think we've seen enough of where the players want to do what the head coach wants them to do. And they can envision things happening, but they couldn't make it happen. This is, to me, is where the guy who gets the money makes a couple, make, wins a couple games for his football team where they execute everything just the way he wants it to be done. And it happens. And instead, in the fourth quarter where they, they don't get a first down and turn a ball back over to somebody who then later scores and you lose and you say, well, if we would have just done that, the head coach makes a call that everybody executes. He makes that call. He's the guy that we say at the end of the game, that guy won the game. The head coach just won this game for us. Forget the players. They play. They run these plays all the time. They execute these plays all the time. But in this instance, the head coach called a play or he called a timeout to help the defense or something happened where Sark has won the game. I think he's going to need two of those this year. And I think he's going to get two of those this year to get them to the championship uh, play in the Big 12. And I'll tell you, man, he's one of the best. I mean, the way he prepares for a game. I mean, we're beating the hell out of folks in the first two quarters. I mean, sure. we really are. So I'll take away the fourth quarter because if we have a better third quarter, the fourth quarter is not going to matter. I mean, we're up three, four touchdowns and end up losing games like we did to Caleb Williams in Oklahoma and other games. Now we lose close ones, but they shouldn't be close when you're up by three touchdowns. You're right. It, it, like they really shouldn't. And so I'm with you. And, and, and my deal is the fourth quarter don't have to be that hard. If whatever adjustments, whatever whatever you do at halftime, I hell, I'm getting to the point where I'm saying just stay out there. Don't go in the locker room at halftime. Keep <laughs> keep the momentum. Just stretch and do some calisthenics because yeah. whatever we're doing at halftime is driving me crazy. I, I mean, it, that third quarter, our third quarter stats are they they're they're like oddly bad for an offense that looked unstoppable. You know that, and so. That, that's where I'm at. And, and, and for me, that development, to your point on showing progress on, you know, just the overall game plan or adjustments or, you know, finding ways to beat teams and not put yourself in bad positions. Because, again, these teams, as much as we we always have, you know, a little bit of that Kool-Aid, they haven't won consistently. No. So don't put them in that position to where they're going to tighten up and find a way to lose a game. Now, there's some of these, especially the Bama game, where we didn't have a little – we certainly uh, took a little bit uh, uh, on the chin with, with the guys and stripes. But but even that, if you're up by two, three touchdowns, you can overcome that. So I've seen so much improvement. What Banks have done with our special teams, dude, it is phenomenal. I mean, we saw that year one. I mean, they're sure. blocking kicks. I was at a scrimmage the other day. They blocked the kick. So it's not a, a fluke deal. They prepare and, and – and they're developing and getting better and taking pride in those little things. And um, but like I said, Quinn's development matters. Um, but but our O line's a, a year older, so that's a big deal. We have capable RBs back there, I, even after losing, you know, Bijan and Roshan. And that third quarter to me will be the difference in the Big Twelve. Get, I'm not even saying go out and score another twenty-one. Get ten. Get seven. Just show that continue defense, make a few stops. Right. And um and, and I think they'll they'll win more than they'll lose if, if we can figure that third quarter out. Yeah, I've got to follow up, Quan, because you mentioned you were at uh, the scrimmage a couple of days ago. And now I've got to know any any standouts, <laughs> any players that maybe Texas fans aren't talking about enough that you saw big thanks from and that you now expect big thanks from this year. You know, I think uh I certainly can say and Sark has talked to it. We've been waiting on Collins to, to ball out. I mean, the guy has a top 10 body. Yes. I, mean, he, it, I walk by and I'm like, like, I'm reminded why I was okay with being done with football. Because, <laughs> like, again, and I played with the Julius Peppers of the world, and he's, he's looking like them. I just need the Julius Peppers motor and, and, and production. And so, and, he, and he's also the one who blocked that kick and was fired up about it. So, the defense balled out, you know, that first quarter, you know, those first couple of guys going in didn't look great. Now they turned it on and Quinn looked pretty good, hitting some long strikes to his guys and throwing a couple of touchdowns. 
But it looked, and this is what's so funny. We won a national championship, and Vince didn't win practice all the time. You know, Huff and all these cats, they whooped our butt sometime, and we whooped their butt sometime. I'm not saying they look like a national championship practice, like like we used to have and compete on that level, but they were competing on that level. I mean, our D-line was smashing our O-line at one point, and then our O-line was getting fired up, and there's even some helmet throws and just fun practice stuff that looks so familiar. And so the, the competition w- was real. Uh, it, it really was. Uh, the, it's a couple of young guys were – they're in the mix, man. And when I talk about the receiver, you know, um, core, you know, the cooks of the world, they don't look like freshmen. You know, they're, they're out there competing, running good routes, and that's kudos to our new receivers coach. And so um, it, it's I saw a lot, and, and that's – I'm almost a little bit nervous because that was a practice, and you want to see guys in all the above. But what it confirmed is we have the capable cast. We, we, we really do. And – so, some made plays, some made drops, some got picks. It was um, some that you know they're going to be in the mix, like the forwards. Uh, thank God he came back at linebacker, and he 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 knows he had an unbelievable year last year. We all do, but again, it, it's it wasn't a fluke. I mean, it, it, these guys are, are 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 working their butt off, and and, and that's what I saw. I mean, I left uh, probably right at the fourth quarter because it was a full full day, and it was hot as all get out out there but it, it was it was cool man and, and and it was cool to see them develop or uh, developing on that level or, and really competing on that level well you know it's it's you know bk said last week uh you know it maybe it is that time where they play for the the name on the front of the jersey instead of the name on the back of the jersey you know there comes a time when you're when you're a when you're at your university or i don't care if you're pop warner or your high school where you you quit worrying about what they talked talk to you about and they're telling you how good you are everybody starts to look at the name in the front and they play as as a group and that's in all aspects and they and they behave and they act that way on the field and off the field maybe they're at that point maybe the head coach as he says i i I see them as looking like the team i thought i i i envisioned them to be and that's on the field off the field that's you know in in meeting rooms guys aren't jacking around they're paying attention they're understanding what film study is all about Maybe they're at that point right now. Maybe that's what you see with that competition on the no, practice that's, field. That's a good point. One of the things I talked about not long ago, and I think I left and I was talking to Bianco, and I said, man, this feels different. And, and for me, there's a few things, y'all, and especially talking to y'all in a while, I always said, we got some guys, but the coach are still not there. I'm certainly back in, in, in the Herman era. I was like, oh, God. Well, he actually has some pretty damn good recruiting classes, but mm-hmm. the coach just wasn't there. Right. Um, it's a different culture and feel. It's a work culture. And, you know, it's funny because the quarterbacks always get the love. So you want to talk about Manning being on campus, which I think that's going to absolutely help Malik and Quinn because the Mannings, you just got to give them their due. They prepare differently. Right. They, they're, they're pros in middle school, dude. They just, it's who <laughs> they are. So, Manning being in there and being a, a film crazy person is going to trickle down to the rest of the QBs and players. Um, he doesn't have to start. Uh, what he needs to do is, is be that leader, you know, even on the sideline, getting all the help, giving all the help he can, um, um, watching and developing himself psychologically and getting ready for the college game. And then again, forward coming back, having some older guys. We've been missing culture and leadership, in my opinion. We've had some players. But culture and leadership has been absent, and I think that's where we are now. Uh, mm-hmm. th- these guys really, truly want to win. They're not shy to talk about winning championships. I mean, they said it, and you know, maybe behind the scenes and all of that. But I don't. I just didn't always see that level of of worth e- ethic. And I, I think Vince went to a scrimmage the other day, and. I think Worthy kind of walked out the field and dropped his helmet, and Vince got on his butt about that. And I think there was a time where, not that it was a level of disrespect, but they just didn't honor that interaction. And Mm Worthy was like, boom, let me pick this up. You're right. That championship level culture matters. Picking up the helmet, those little things. By the way, if you get used to and make that your norm, you won't tighten up as much in the fourth quarter. You're ready for it because the little things is what it's about. I mean, at that moment Mm -hmm. when the clock is running down, that's go time. 
not piss down your leg time. Right. And that's the culture that I feel is developing slowly but surely. Um, again, I'm not saying we're going to go win a natty. That'd be pretty damn sweet. But I am saying they're going to give this Big 12 a run for its money. And culturally, I believe it now. I was hopeful yeah. before, but what I saw in that scrimmage, what I see culturally through Sark, the coaching staff, and all the above, and they're different than ours. And it takes me a little – honestly, it took me a second and a conversation with Huff to kind of respect that. Um, but uh, there's there's reason to believe that it's just different over there, and it's certainly easy to see. I love hearing that. Quan, we know you're busy, so we'll let you go with this one. If I'm not mistaken, the un- induction is, what, September 15th, and then you guys yeah. are going to be honored the day after at the Wyoming game on the 16th. If Sark hits you up on that Saturday and is like, I need you out there, how many catches, how many yards, how many touchdowns for Quan Cosby in 2023? Shoot. Hey, I, I, I'd have to probably decline and say, hey, Spieth, how about you hit me up? Let's go golf. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Another member of it. This dad bod is not getting – again, I walked by Collins and was like, oh, Lord, I used to do this? <laughs> and, and I also was out there looking at the freaking – sitting on that heat and going, how did we do this? Yeah. But, um, no, man, that would be so cool. Like, I'd give him a good series. <laughs> and then I'd need some oxygen and an IV. Oh, yeah. And get a helicopter off the damn thing. But, no, man, it's so fun. And, and that was a cool piece of being fired up. Um, I always am during this season. It's freaking game week, but um, uh, man, I, I'm so fired up for Coach and and, and, the, and the players out there. And, and like I said, one, one of my favorite, Jay Witt. I'm hoping he catch 80 balls this year and and and, and finish strong. So uh, hey, always appreciate you, cats, man. Uh, good friends and always a great job, Brad. I think you're coming back this way, so I'm pumped about that as well. And Bucky. You, Keep your damn clothes on, and if we're gonna. <laughs> oh yeah, I I just I just walk up the steps and do do the show now. <laughs> hey, please keep that camera up where it is. There you go. <laughs> Quan, it's always good to talk. Always to good, you, man. man. Hook him, baby. Stay safe, man. Thanks, Quan. Hook him. Hook him. Care, Great seeing you. All right, there he goes.